going on everybody? It's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden. Happy New Year. Uh, it's 2020, January 1st. I uh, just want to wish you guys a Happy New Year before anything. And uh, also make a quick video about something uh, a lot of fish keepers um, could actually miss. This is uh, something that actually happened to me personally in the summertime. That uh, a revelation that I dawned upon myself accidentally as well uh, something that happened to a, a fellow fish keeper a few days ago uh, that really made me want to make this video today for you guys and uh, in the hopes that this would help somebody from uh, losing their fish uh, accidentally so what I'm talking about is uh, something that can happen to any level of fish keeper uh, especially if you don't have your own RODI unit or water filter um, especially for people that don't own the house that they live in uh, like myself I, I'm in an apartment that I'm renting so uh, I can't even put a uh, auto water change system at, uh, let alone RODI in it uh, unless like it's a tabletop or desktop like a small unit uh, portable whatever so um, these limitations limit us from uh, actually limit us to using only tap water as our primary water source for our water changes um, the thing that a lot of people don't uh, realize is that the water company does not by law have to tell you that they're changing the chemistry of the water that you're getting uh, there's also things that could be in the water that is not harmful to you but can be very harmful to your fish uh, one of those things is ammonia um, I personally found out that our Toronto tap water uh, this summer had 0 0.025 parts per million of ammonia um, and this is straight out of the tap. Uh, I haven't checked it recently and I'm going to check it today actually. Uh, what I have been doing since the summertime was aging all my water for at least 24 to 48 hours and using Prime and um, basically to to eliminate any chances of uh, negative effects of ammonia and I also don't do any more than a 40 to 45 at most a 50 percent water change um, and all in the summertime I did lose uh, a, Chinese, a Siamese algae eater uh, when I did a 70 percent water change and I had no idea how that happened because uh, the water was uh, aged for like about 24 hours um, and uh, then I did a, a test and uh, the ammonia had spiked and I was like how did that happen I just did a water change and uh, lo and behold I find out my tap water has 0.25 parts per million of ammonia now my friend who lives in another province in Canada uh, in her case the, the ammonia level was one part per million uh, so it was pretty bad. She was doing massive amounts of water changes and her fish were getting ammonia burns or signs of ammonia burn and she couldn't understand why. Uh, and then she did uh, a test on uh, New Year's Eve on her tap water and found out that uh, the tap water has one part per million or higher ammonia uh, concentration right out of the tap. So uh, what you can do to eliminate something like this is to get a, uh, a master test kit. This is not an advertisement. I did pay for this. They did not send me this for free, uh, although I wish they do send me stuff for free. Um, this is by API. You can buy a master test kit by any brand. Uh, I recommend uh, API because of the brand I use. Uh, they have not failed for me so far. They have saved my fish quite a few times. Uh, I don't swear by this. I do use other methods to keep track of... Uh, most of my uh, parameters but for ammonia readings this is the, one of the things you can use and they have an ammonia test kit by itself and what you want to do is follow the instructions and test for your ammonia concentration which is resting ammonia test solution at eight drops so you know shake well whatever they tell you the whole directions and uh, then there's a chart here that uh, shows you what the levels are based on the chart so in my friend's case it was green it was somewhere here between one and two parts per million and in my case it was that color 0 0.25 um, now on an established tank with an established filter this is not too much of an issue if you have 0.25 parts per million of ammonia but if you're going into the range where it's one part per million or higher 
you are going to run into trouble, especially when you do large volume water changes, because the filter doesn't have enough time to deal with the added ammonia, and the fish will start getting ammonia burn and suffocating to death, and uh, having adverse effects to the ammonia poisoning. Um, so uh, this is something you need to check regularly, because the water companies are not bound by law to keep the same consistency of water, and things like ammonia are not harmful to humans. Uh, in smaller concentrations, so they do not remove it from your water. Uh, so you can uh, call your local water company and find out what's actually in the tap water, or you can just get a test kit and regularly test your water, which is what I recommend doing. Um, everybody should test their water. Uh, we have one of the safest tap water systems in the world in North America here in Canada, especially in Toronto. Our water is very safe. I do not say that our water is bad, but if you are aquarium hobbyist, please check your local water because it might not be so good uh, and the, the conditions might change from season to season or for, uh, different parts of the year so you need to check your water regularly and I don't mean the water in your tank but I mean the water coming out of your tap so take a bucket of water let it sit for about an hour and then test it for ammonia, nitrates and nitrites um, and other trace elements if you can test it uh, another good thing to have is a part of ppm meter uh, which reads uh, the conductivity of the water or I would say uh, what how much uh, dissolved mineral content is so if you have a ppm meter it will show you let's say my water here has 170 parts per million and majority of that is uh, calcium and other trace elements uh, it's not harmful to the fish actually it's really good for plant growth and stuff but it does not uh, mean that I can use that on all my tanks. Some of my fish like the green neon tetras, they live in lower pH water and for them uh, the added calcium content is a little too high so I have to strip the water out using a peat filter. I will show you how I do that in another video and I'll put the link to that uh, after I get that video done onto this video so you can check that out as well. Um, so that's the update I have for you. Check your water, uh, test it regularly um, get a master test kit. It's not just testing your uh, tank water after or before water change. Also test your tap water and regularly check uh, the levels that it comes out at so that you have an idea of where your water is at all times so you do not accidentally kill your fish by doing something you think is good but in turn is harmful to your fish and this is something that could happen to anybody um, so you know this is, it's a really good idea to periodically test your water and I'm, I'm as bad as everybody else I haven't tested my tap water since uh, the summer uh, and uh, I've just been aging my water for a day or two um, and uh, putting prime in it and hoping for the best but uh, testing your water is essentially a sure shot way to make sure you're not putting anything that is not supposed to be in your water in your tank without you knowing it and uh, what the only thing I do actually test for is a TDS um, I check my TDS religiously I check the TDS coming out of the tap and I check the TDS in the tanks uh, that's how I keep uh, track of my nitrate levels essentially because nitrates are measured in parts per million and uh, total TDS is also measured in parts per million so if your water out of the tap let's say has 170 parts per million which is what it is right now in my tap or 175 parts per million depending on the temperature uh, and uh, there is no nitrates in that water let's say that is the the premise like which is the case in my my water uh, and I put it into my tank then any other added concentration in the tank granted I regularly maintain and there's no um, accumulation of solids or anything heavy metals from evaporation and stuff um, let's say those things are not a factor then the added uh, parts per million would be nitrates so say when I test my water it comes out and says 220 parts per million I would have 45 to 50 parts per million nitrates then my tank would do, be due for water change that's how I keep track of things uh, in terms of day to day so um, it's just a simple solution for me instead of just going and putting out this and testing 50 tanks to see where my nitrates are in every single tank uh, I just test the TDS and when the TDS goes above 200, 210 parts per million, it's ripe due for a water change. Uh, it does go above 220 sometimes, 230 even, um, especially on like this week, uh, I've just been slacking a little bit, I should be doing water changes, so I'm, I'm actually doing water changes today and tomorrow, 
Um, I have this whole week off, so that's why I'm slacking. <laughs> when I have time off, I I tend to 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 put things uh, or procrastinate more as opposed to when I'm busy like every day because then I don't have time off to procrastinate for. Right now, I can say, hey, I'll do it tomorrow because I have tomorrow off. So uh, running off topic there, but anyways, uh, the point is check your water, test it regularly. Um, and uh, my friend who had an issue with her tank, um, she has figured out a solution. Uh, and uh, you know, night ammonia is something that your tank filter deals with pretty fast. So if you do have an established tank uh, that is understocked, that you can take water out of um, to do some water changes with, that's something you can use uh, to dilute some of the water. Uh, another option is to uh, let it sit for a couple of days and put prime in it and then the prime does deal with some of the ammonia but if the ammonia level is above one part per million then uh, I mean an RODI unit or some type of filter that can remove the ammonia plus prime um, you know a few different solutions to take out as much ammonia as possible because your sensitive fish can get uh, ammonia burn like for example I have wild caught uh, L471 um, dwarf snowball flecos in here there's nine of them they retail for $65 each so the fish in here just the nine flecos alone is worth $600 or more um, or around $600 it's a breeding quality so it's definitely worth $600 um, and uh, I have these redhead tapahos uh, they're worth at least 25 to 50 bucks each because they're pairs I can sell these pairs for $100 each so I have three pairs that's another $300 just in this tank and then there's two uh, 333 King Tiger Plecos which are worth 50 to 60 bucks each so that's another hundred dollars so that alone is a thousand dollars worth of livestock in this tank okay that's just a rough estimate of what a tank could hold and uh, something as simple as a water change uh, could really destroy your entire tank um, in, in, in a matter of an hour or half an hour because you didn't know that there was ammonia in your water so that's something to consider, that's something you should uh, check regularly. Um, I recommend at least every every week or every other week just checking your incoming water from your tap uh, unless you are using an RODI unit or a, a carbon block filter to remove chlorines, chloramines and ammonia and nitrates and nitrites um, or uh, whatever harmful trace minerals from your uh, tap water. Um, otherwise, please check. and. Uh, you know, also check your tank water as well, but regularly check your incoming tap water. So this is something I want to uh, add today because um, I want to make sure other people um, don't have this issue and act accidentally end up losing a bunch of fish uh, due to, um, you know, something that they had no control over, first of all, and something that they could prevent by simply checking uh, their tap water and uh, remedying if there is an issue. So that's the update I have for you. I uh, hope everybody's having a great New Year's Day. Uh, happy 2020. Um, I hope everybody has a prosperous 2020 New Year. Um, the channel is growing. There's 137 subscribers at the last time I checked. Um, and uh, I love you all. You are awesome. Uh, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, if you like this type of content, please like this video. If you dislike this type of content, you can hit the dislike button. Uh, please let me know your thoughts on this uh, topic as well as uh, what your actual tap water uh, parameters are coming out in your local area. I would love to know what different people's tap water is uh, so that I have a better idea of what type of fish each person is able to keep in their neighborhood or in their respected areas or states or provinces or countries. Uh, because some of the people that watch my videos are from uh, all parts of the world. So uh, I would love to know what type of animals or fish you can keep based on the type of water you have. So please comment below and let me know what type of water you have. Uh, TDS, pH, um, how much, if, if it does have ammonia or nitrates or nitrites coming out of the tap. If it has heavy trace metals, uh, what the, um, the GH and the KH is. Uh, and uh, all these measurements that you have of your particular water in your neighborhood, please uh, comment below and let me know So, because uh, I would love to know. As always, I thank you for your support. I love you all, um, and I uh, hope everybody's having a happy new year, and I will see you guys tomorrow. God bless.